So good morning guys. Uh, today we got a very unique opportunity. Uh, we are going to go, hur go to Hurricane Ditcher and take a tour of their facility. They make ditchers for farmers like us to use. We do have one actually so I'll get to see where it was made. I have been through their factory before. Um, it's rather interesting. It's a different facility so stay tuned and hope you guys enjoy. So yeah, this is where all hurricane ditchers are made. Um, they're sold all across the world, different states, different countries, all kinds of different places. I'm sure he'll give us a pretty good idea here in a minute. But they're my neighbor, they're right down the road from me, and they're just outside of Vincennes here. So, yeah. So I'm here with John. Uh, he's the owner of Hurricane Ditcher. Correct. And he's gonna kinda show us how this raw steel gets turned into a piece of ditching equipment that runs a ditcher that farmers like us use to make ditches, uh, counties they use them to make ditches, clean them out, whatever you gotta do. So uh, on the other side of this, there's a fab shop and then we're gonna see where this gets turned into what exactly? <laughs> it gets turned into the pieces that make the ditchers that do the work to clean out these ditches. So uh, we take basically all of our angle and flat bar and uh, round stock and it's stored here in this section. And then we use two conveyors uh, with holes in the wall. And we'll those run through those conveyors into different machines on the other side of this wall that we'll see how that's processed. Okay, that's pretty neat. So uh, we'll go over the other side of the wall. <laughs> all right, so what do we got here? This looks like a bunch of fancy machinery that I don't know how to work. <laughs> <laughs> this is what's called an iron worker. This is a 180 ton uh, iron worker and what it does is it uh, shears and punches and notches uh, different types of materials so when we slide our flat bar uh, through here on the outside on this roller we can slide it right in here and we can actually shear whatever size piece we want off this flat bar uh, we also can use angle and uh, square and round tube can be sheared in these these two ports up here so uh, once we shear off the pieces that we need, um, <clears throat> then we can uh, either take those as a completed thing to, for an assembly, or we can bring over to this end, and in this end we can punch holes in it. So you can see this, the punchings and things that we get out of that. That was three quarter inch material. And we just line up a, a punch mark, and then we just push the, push the material out of it. Uh, so we make a lot of punchings uh, during the course of the day or week uh, for the holes that we need in those pieces. Okay, so this machine here will punch a hole through a piece of metal. That's correct. Wow. Yeah. That's crazy. I've seen them do some of this stuff in our Miller, but I never knew that they could do that. I always thought it was drills and stuff like that. So that's pretty neat to know. Yeah. yeah this is one of the one of the punches and dies that sits here. So. You're putting your die in here and then your punch sets up in there and then you just punch a hole through it. Huh. So interesting. Yeah. So then that's what that hole punch does is it punches that hole in there. Yeah. For a bolt to go through or something like that. Yep. This for a pin. Yep. So is there any advantage over using the hole punch instead of like a drill? Uh time. Time. Yeah. It's a lot quicker. Yeah, you can punch that hole in a matter of three or four seconds. Really? Um, you can't you can't drill it in three minutes. Hmm. Before, so. so the other door coming through from the outside is where we bring anything that needs to be sawed. Um, that's where you get into most of your tubing and we actually do our bigger shafting through that. Uh, it really distorts the shafting when we try to uh, run it through here and, and shear it. Uh, putting pressure and weight on it, it'll bend it and crimp it up and yeah. make it a little bit harder to do. Yeah. 
So uh, most of our shafting and all of our tubing uh, comes into this saw. And uh, pictured over here are some of the pieces that we're actually sawing. Uh, the big tubing. So you guys are sawing this big tubing here with that machine? That's correct. Interesting, and that, that's uh, that's just basically a bigger version of like what I would have in my shop yeah. for cutting pieces of steel and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, we probably have something in this and similar to what you use right back here. Right back. That we use just for the shorter pieces we have that still need to be cut into something. Yeah. Um, this this is kind of like what I like what we have there at the farm. Yeah. Just a, just a just a smaller, littler version for a smaller pipe like that instead of right. that big tubing over there that's like a foot by a foot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Basically they're punching those and then they're coming over here. This isn't the right thing, they've been cutting some plastic, but there's... There's a certain drill bit to drill out that spot for that plow bolt. Yeah, right there. Huh. So that that's what they use here to drill this out for a plow bolt, yep. for and a plow bolt head. And they come and just drill that down so it sits flush so, down yeah. inside of it. And then that way you can, if it goes in a spot where it needs to be flush, it's flush against there and then uh, you don't have to have like a wrench, you can just use like a ratchet or something like that to put them on. That's not what they're there for, but yeah. it's a good idea to what it is. Yeah. Yep. Pretty neat thing. So he was just telling me that they go through and they do do some fabbing in here. Not very much, but they do have a weld station right there. So instead of going from here to the next place, to the next place, to the next place, it goes from here straight to the paint room. So he was just telling me that this is a hardened steel for wear. It's a little bit harder. They weld this on here. This is what goes on the actual ditcher itself, what spins to kick the dirt out that's mm -hmm. what that is and it this piece of metal here whatever it is helps to keep it from wearing as fast so he was just also telling me that all these here are patterns are scattered all around the shop here kind of hanging up on the walls and uh that's so then that way they're not just measuring it all the time and they can just go ahead and use one of these and i'm guessing lay it down or do whatever they got to do to get it figured out to where it's at a certain point yep. So this is a plasma table here. This is how they cut out a lot of things. Uh, this, they're actually using a torch head. That, that we said you're not using an actual plasma because it's too big. But they're using a torch head. Huh. Just said he's cutting through 16.2 inches of metal with that right now. It takes forever to do that by hand. 16.2 inches per minute. Per minute. minute. 16 foot. One inch steel, 16.2 inches per minute. Wow, that's quick. So in the bottom there, you can probably see that green, that is coolant. They put 250 gallon of water in and then put in a little bit of coolant, which is over there. And the water's actually over here. So this is a roller. This is all the flat steel here. They put all the flat steel in, in here or in the in here, right, or in the? Well, if it comes off the plasma table, it needs rolled. Okay. Let's stick it in here and roll it. So you guys will, you guys will put it in the plasma table, and then you can roll it if it needs rolled, yeah. and then goes on to the next part of the facility. So I'm guessing that you have forklifts and stuff to move all this around. That's correct. <laughs> yep. There's one right down there. Huh. This used to be well, we used to cut this with the plasma. Table. Oh my. <laughs> so. He was also just saying that this right here is what they put on the counterweight on their side arms, which is their bigger machine or their biggest machine. And then they use this right here to cut it instead of using the plasma table. I'm guessing because it's too thick. Yeah. yeah. So, and then over here, he's gonna give us a little bit of a demonstration on rolling it.
much of his precepts as he does that. So he's not just guessing. Yeah. He's just watching his eyes and what he's doing. He's doing. Huh. Basically, in a matter of a minute, he's bent that. Wow. I've seen these things before, but I've never seen them work. That's pretty cool. So then he just took this piece, or this flat iron, and made it into that curved steel in that machine. Now that's pretty neat, if you ask me. So you guys will roll anything from that thin steel down there to something like this. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so we're in the main stab shop now. Okay. Main assembly shop. Main assembly shop. This is where everything gets assembled before it gets painted. Yeah. Okay. So what's this big tall thing here? Uh, this is a 275 ton press brick. Uh, so we use this on the pieces that need actual form. Uh, we saw the roller over there, so this isn't going to roll. This is just, just going to bend items. So okay. if you take like the bottom, these are the bottom of some of our machines, which was a flat plate. Um, and then we put two bends in it to create the bottom of our, With of that, our gearbox. With that press. That's correct. Wow. Must be a pretty strong press then. Uh, it's decent, yeah. 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 Huh. It's got a 12 foot bed on it. And, uh, I think it's 275 ton. 275 ton. Huh. So you just said these will wind up like this one far piece right over. Yeah. That's underneath all that right there. <laughs> all because of that press. <laughs> So you got you got five stations that run around all the way through here that basically run from beginning to end of the fabrication of it. Yeah. So they all have overhead cranes uh, because we just can't pick up. Everything. Can't pick up everything with your hand at this point. Um, we do use four trucks uh, as well when we can't get the crane, uh, you know, the transport pieces back and forth and that type of thing. Hmm. So uh, right now, like he's building an impeller wheel. And the color wheel will then be transferred over to this guy who's actually building the machine. Okay. That. So he's doing some sub assemblies. Um, and uh, a couple stations are doing sub assemblies, and the other stations are putting the machines together. Okay. So, so basically, it goes from one piece of metal to two pieces of metal welded together to three pieces welded together, and then so forth as it goes down the line here, and then. Eventually, it winds up down there getting assembled the rest of the way. So then this is more of a finished product. This is after all the welding, all the fabricating and stuff is done. And then after that, he's got to drop gears, chains, shafts. All that stuff's got to be dropped in here as well as your propeller down there. Or you call that an impeller, right? Yeah, it's an impeller. So you got your chains in here, sprockets, and then you got your PTO shaft that goes from here to like your tractor. So that, that is what it looks like kind of after it's assembled. They got their plates on there and everything. They got the shaft and then they got the bearing on there. Okay, so these are done with the rollers. These are ones that, that got punched. Got yeah. punched, yeah, okay. Punch in. Um, more pieces that got rolled. Okay, so these, these got these big long tubes here got sawed in that big saw over there. Okay. So then that's another one of your diagrams there. So then they're not guessing and measuring all the time. This is a basically a layout of what what he's got to do here. Huh. So earlier he was talking about they, they made a weight with uh, pieces of metal. And that's what's inside here. There's a bunch of slabs of metal in here and it's all welded inside this enclosed box. So it looks nice, I'm guessing. Mm -hmm. And then 
this will all get thrown on one of the side arms and then put with the finished product of basically what's sitting right there the side arm and then that way this is for weight so then that way it doesn't flip the flip the tool over or anything like that whenever your arms way out pretty neat and then that tube slides into that tube yeah so then these are the impeller wheels that he was talking about they mount on there with a bearing and it spins and that's what throws your dirt out to the side yeah but these are kind of like a fun design i'm guessing but they're they work really good we have one i'll stand up for it they work really good <laughs> he sold us one somehow <laughs> he got through to my dad yep yep so every every part or a part that was in the other buildings that we was in is somewhere in here on a shelf rack on the floor here or wherever it needs to be to make one of them this one's 28 air pounds and this is how they hold the big sidearm. The other one over there was the baby sidearm. So now we're going to see how this color gets turned to yellow real quick. <laughs> so they're wiping them down here. They use a some kind of like a detergent to basically get all the junk off them that doesn't need to be on them. Like your silicone, your oils, stuff like that. Then that way the paint sticks a little bit better. So yeah and then after that they paint some of these things black they close this door and then they'll paint them in there and then it turns into that finished product so this is the detail side so once they move back here and that's where we attach all of our decals and all of our pto's bins bushings legs ratchet jacks whatever uh, needs to be added to them some of them these tires and so Back here and then get out. So then this this is where you put all your decals on your cylinders even too. Huh. Pretty neat. So this is what they was cutting on the plasma table whenever it was in there. And they don't have one in here, but they have one in the hoop building. Basically what they're taking the shows or delivering and stuff like that so you still got a lot of shows to go right next week you said you're going to be in <laughs> memphis you was at uh national farm machinery show in louisville last week and then the week before that you was in north carolina so so and then this is that one shank and i'm guessing that that just kind of helps to break it up a little bit before it goes into your impeller here Correct. and this is this is actually the same show show model that i was looking at in louisville with the clear glass on it and stuff so then you can see into it and see what it is huh so uh this here is the sw what they call a swinger you put it behind a tractor and then instead of making three ruts where like this one runs directly behind the tractor this one you can swing it to the side basically in the tire track of the tractor and then that way you're only digging two ruts instead of three and then also over here we've got a couple more I'm guessing that these are all, are these all going to be shipped out eventually or yeah. are they just, yeah. so and then. Now this one is, there's only two of them like it in the world. Uh, this is what we call reversed baby sidearm. Wait, what? I did not think, I did not look at that for a minute. <laughs> okay. Uh, so this so. is actually, if you had a tractor that had a front hitch and a front PTO, you're oh. actually pushing it rather than pulling it. Okay which is the most efficient way to run a ditcher one, one of those ditchers yeah so basically you're getting the most efficiency i've never seen one of these before this is pretty interesting i was looking at it for a second i was like what's going on here so is this a prototype or is this it's a sale machine. this yeah. so you have sold this one then yeah. oh my wow huh so then these tires up front here they control like how high or low it goes basically on the bottom of it here and then basically just something for it to ride on to help you get a lot of weight uh, on the front of a tractor yeah, whenever you're doing this yeah so you're basically just carrying it on the on the wheels to help support it so and then these cylinders are what moves around the end of it here up down out sideways and then your obvious pto 
driven. So is there chains inside there that run around the... Correct, yeah. So you run chains that will then in turn spin your propeller down here or your impeller. So this here is basically a old, or a, it's probably about the same year also as what ours is. And it's the same style and everything. They use this one for demonstration purposes. Uh, ours is a 24, this one's a 24. And it's pulled by a tractor, PTO. And then there's a cylinder on the back here that's for lifting it up and down and controlling the depth and stuff. But this is kind of like what we got. Um, I don't even know if any of our neighbors have one, do you? Oh, there's a few around. There's a few neighbors that have them around. And then there's just a couple of different ones sitting here on this trailer that he takes around to shows. This is the big sidearm whenever it's finished. That thing, it just, it looks huge from down here. It looks absolutely insane. Wow. So that there is a three and three and a half foot wheel from end to end, 42 inches. And then the this thing is the same one as what's in the back there controlled by cylinders and a pto and a three point and it's got tires on there basically for weight to keep you from bouncing stuff down the road whenever you're driving down the road with a the tractor then this is another big weight here finished project finished product hmm pretty neat so anyways john thank you thank you it was nice coming down here appreciate it Thanks and uh, I'll leave links down below to their website. Uh, I'll probably leave an email or something down there. Whatever John prefers. And I guess if you guys want to talk to him about one of these things or whatever you want to do, you can go ahead and email him, text him, call him, whatever. Anything will work. <laughs> anything will work. We'll take anything. Hey, guys. Uh, there's going to be links in the description below to get to uh, Hurricane Ditchers website and some other stuff here and there uh please remember to like and subscribe go check them out i was very thankful for them letting me come out and tour their little facility that they got going there it's really neat how much stuff they can crank out of there and it's just right down the road from us which is really cool so yeah go ahead and check them out and i guess we'll see you guys in the next video